In this video, you will learn five steps that'll ensure that you win at any dating or relationship mind games. That's right, I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do so you can come out a winner every time someone tries to manipulate or play head games with you. So don't go anywhere, cause we're starting in four seconds. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Antonio Borello. Welcome to my channel. I'm a psychologist and a relationship coach and I make weekly dating and relationship advice videos. If you wanna build great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love, start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification so you aren't missing anything. Okay, on to the five steps to win any mind games. Oh, and I'm saving the best one for last because without doing this last tip, the others won't really work very well anyway. So make sure you watch till the end. Mind games or head games are calculated and deliberate behaviors that one or both partners use to manipulate, to intimidate, to influence, or to undermine another person's behaviors. They are used by people who have learned how to push other people's buttons and pick up on subtle emotional signals in order to manipulate them. These games involve twisting the facts and creating doubt to destabilize another person. Usually, mind games are rewarding to one person and harmful to the other, but either way, mind games create exhausting and messy dynamics in every kind of friendship or dating relationship. Remember, mind games are calculated and deliberate because the people who use them expect to get something out of them. And when you understand what that is, what they hope to achieve by engaging in mind games, then you can expose the game and the player and win every time. Are they using mind games because they want to feel more secure in the relationship or gain some self-esteem or self-justification? Or are they controlling and abusive by nature and trying to use mind games to break down and destabilize and control you? If their mind game can elicit a particular response from you or move you to do something that they want, then they gain the powerful feeling that they're looking for in feeling control of you and the situation. So, how do you find out the intent behind the games? When you feel like something isn't right, when you feel like someone is trying to manipulate you, when you feel it in your gut, that's your intuition telling you that something is wrong. That's your intuition telling you that something about the way this person is acting or behaving just isn't right. So you listen to your intuition and you call their bluff. So number one is call their bluff. It's very important that the person who's playing mind games know that you know what's going on, that you know the game is being played. That's why you need to confront them directly and ask exactly what motivated their behavior that bothered you. So, being as direct as possible, share your thoughts, and let your partner know exactly what troubles you, what troubles you about a given behavior of his. And this is something you want to do when you're not angry or upset. It's a heart-to-heart -heart conversation where you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable and sharing your concerns. Number two, understanding their motivation. The most important part of this conversation has to do with his reaction or response to your concerns. And he may respond in one of three different ways. He might respond by completely denying what you know has happened. Or number two, he may become defensive and try to turn it around on you like it's somehow all your fault. Or number three, he will respond with concern and explanation and attempt to deepen the relationship through understanding. Oh, and yeah, the first two are bad, but I wanna talk about the third response first because you can work with this one. As I mentioned before, Sometimes games are used by insecure partners who want to test your feelings or test your reactions because they want to feel better about the relationship. Again, these are manipulative behaviors and they're deliberate, but the perpetrators might not even realize that they're engaging in psychological manipulation. Here's an example. Imagine someone you are dating is encouraging you to do one thing and then getting angry when you take them up on the offer. Like, they suggest you go hang out with your friends on a weekend, and when you do, they become upset because you chose to hang out with friends instead of with them. So why did they suggest you go in the first place? Because they wanted you to demonstrate that you'd rather be with them. So here, the mind game was motivated by insecurity. In this case, having a heart-to-heart -heart with your partner 
may help him to fully understand the behavior and why it's happening. It takes so much courage to be vulnerable enough to share our deepest needs of wanting to love and be loved. Remember, they want to feel better about some aspect of the relationship. They want to know how much you care. So encourage them to share and make them feel safe in doing so. Honestly, this could be an opportunity for the two of you to get closer as you both acknowledge the pain and the problem and seek understanding. Number three, exposing the player. If your partner responds to your conversation with denial or becomes extremely defensive, you may be dealing with a controlling or abusive person. In other words, they're going to attempt to turn this thing around and make you question what you're feeling. This is part of the game playing. It's part of the manipulation and it's part of their attempt to destabilize you. Look, your partner should never minimize or deny your right to what you're feeling. If you're hurt, it's probably because someone has disappointed you. And it's not up to them to decide how you should feel. A friend doesn't minimize or ridicule something that hurt you or try to convince you that you're overreacting. If you feel hurt, your partner should acknowledge your pain and seek to understand you. When you confront and ask your partner about a particular behavior or situation that's troubling you, you are putting them on notice. And when they become defensive and deny what you know is true, it's time for you to stop the conversation and walk away. If you're dealing with a controlling person, this will either challenge them to stop the games with you and move on to someone else, or they'll quit not only messing with your head, but also with your heart. Number four, make a decision and stay strong. When you realize that you're dealing with a manipulative player, it may be difficult to pick up and walk away for a number of reasons. Sometimes people know what they should do, but they choose to do the opposite. I know I've done that. See, when we have high hopes for a relationship, when we think someone has great potential, when we're really attracted to someone, we often minimize and justify their bad behaviors because we don't want to walk away and feel like we failed. That's when you have to forget about what you feel and remember what you deserve. Ask yourself, is this person really relationship worthy? How much of your desire to be in a committed relationship is influenced by the fact that he isn't treating you the way you're supposed to be treated in the first place? And you want to change that. Is that person even capable of a relationship with emotional intimacy? Is he someone who values love and loyalty and mutual respect and the possibility of a future? Because without these, the relationship is nothing more than a casual thing that becomes disposable. Again, is this person really that good? Are you really that compatible? Do you share mutual respect? Can you see yourself making long-term goals with this person? If no, you've got to get yourself to act and stick to the decision. So the last one, the most important one, number five, is overcome your fear of being rejected. Overcome your fear of the relationship ending. Because what's the worst thing that could happen? What's going to happen if you get rejected? Is the world coming to an end? Are you gonna die? Nope, it's simply that the friendship is over and you are no longer dating. And you will survive. How long have you been dating? Three months, six months, a year? What was your life like before you met Mr. Wonderful? I mean, has he been the reason that you've made it thus far in life? I know I'm being ridiculous, but really, rejection is just a disappointment. It's a feeling and it hurts. And you'll probably miss that person too. You'll miss the things that you did together. Okay, that's true. But you must adopt the belief that if it's meant to happen, it will. If you're not compatible, it's not going to work out in the long run anyway. Rejection doesn't mean there's, there's something wrong with you, ever. It only means that whatever we are asking for at this moment is not meant to happen. It does not mean that we stop living or that we bury ourselves in the hole. And please, please, don't ruminate about why he doesn't treat you well or obsess over whether he will treat the next person better. He won't. If he's a manipulative player, he will do the same thing because he needs to be in control. The last thing I want to say is this. If a relationship is meant to be, if he's the person for you, if you're really that compatible, then confronting that person about his bad behavior will certainly wake him up. That's for sure. But if it's not right, if he's not the right one for you, if there are too many differences or if he's a controlling and abusive person, nothing you can do will change that outcome. It just won't work and that's okay. Oh, 
And there are a few unintended consequences of taking back your power and walking away from anyone who attempts to manipulate you by engaging in mind games. Walking away will bring you to a healthier place and ready for the right relationship. You become stronger and are able to overcome the peaks and valleys better with each lesson learned. You become aware of what you want and what you don't want in a relationship and are able to make decisions based on what is best for you. It's very liberating and empowering to know that if you walk away from an abusive person, that person was not really right and that someone better is coming along. So if you're interested in more about mind games and the signs of mind games, click here to watch another video. And I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear of an example of when a person has walked away from someone who is engaging in psychological manipulation with them. How did it feel? How empowered did you feel when you walked away? Leave a comment below and I'll be sure to respond to everyone. And if you're interested in building great relationships so you can grow happy with the people you love, Make sure to subscribe and click that bell notification so that you aren't missing anything. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.